Hello everyone. Welcome to another Try and Fly Revisited. We are looking at an aircraft that I bought, well, some time ago. I think it's uh, about a year and a half or two years ago that I got the uh, original version, the version 1 of the RW Design uh, Twin Otter. And uh, I did fly the older version a couple of times thought it was a nice flu uh, it was a nice aircraft um, I kind of liked it I got myself some liveries um, for flying in Iceland and Greenland like and yeah that was it I didn't really use it that often but from time to time I kind of climbed into this and used it then came out version 2 it was a, a not cost free uh, upgrade um, the version 2 and that's the one we're seeing here now is actually an X-Plane 11 only I think as far as I understand it so you cannot use this version of the aircraft in X-Plane 10 and you need to stick to version 1 if you have it and uh, yeah they've done some major overhaul or they I'm not even sure if it's they or if it's uh, uh, I think it is one developer. Uh, I forgot his name. I think his second name is Wilson. And uh, he has done a kind of makeover um, in several respects. So he's definitely done the X-Plane 11 thingy with the PBR and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think it looks like the resolution of the textures have gone up a little bit could be could not be I'm not sure because I can't remember now what the older version exactly looked like um, I know that I had some issues with the reflections with the older versions in X-Plane 11 that is gone here so yeah so I think outside is whoops rather pleasing and now let's have a look at the inside so this is the new uh, reworked revamped cabin and cockpit of the RW Design DHC for de Havilland Corporation, I think uh, version 6 or Twin Otter. And that's what it looks like. They've uh, overhauled the whole uh, cockpit here. So things do actually look slightly different compared to the old one. Uh, I think there are definitely higher resolution. Um, there has been a lot of uh, really nice design. There are some features I'm going to show you in a moment um, that come with this aircraft and it's the usual uh, twatter uh, sort of you have to get used to sort of cockpit layout but that's nothing that the, the developer uh, um, has to do with so uh, it's just the way this bird is uh, but you get used to it uh, after some time you have to fly this uh, and you have to kind of get used to where things are and just get familiarized okay so that's uh, that's the inside here you can actually open doors okay uh, you can also open oops back door i have to still get used to my views um, i have a view here uh, that is in order to get to that door because that's the only way to open it um, at least the only way I found to open it from the inside and then there, there is the following you see this here in the pocket this is new I, I can't remember having that in version 1 uh, this is a menu in that menu what you can do is you can uh, also open the baggage doors so apparently we do not have a way of opening the baggage doors and the baggage doors are here probably the reason is that we are not inside the baggage room and probably i'm guessing there is no outside uh, well let's have a look why don't we try this so i'm going to close the two baggage doors and let's see can we we can't so as you can see um I have no way of of accessing the the handle here so you really need to go via the menu but that's okay 
it does work and you can open the front and the rear package door uh, what have i got with my views today oh there it is so that's the front one and uh, yeah so at the moment this is an empty or it looks like an empty bird uh, in order to know how empty it really is we need to go here which is a toggle and weight balance menu and then up comes this thing here so a window um, you can actually resize it it took me a moment to find this here <laughs> but um, yeah so you can resize it if it's too big for your screen and basically what you do here is you you can put in the load and the uh, fuel now um, whatever is you know um, it can be a little bit uh, for the first time you do this you probably get mixed up like I did because uh, you click on payload and you actually get into the fuel switch because what they do is they toggle it doesn't matter what you press here okay it toggles so it's not that you click on payload and you get payload you get the next menu okay so payload is when you see the seats that's how I kind of learned it and now watch this um, and this is not a bug actually this is an interesting feature so if you have an empty aircraft and you put a little bit of weight uh, into the rear of the aircraft your aircraft will tilt down now whether or not how much have we put in um, let me see payload we have put in 310 kilograms um, and it already topples the, the airplane over now I'm assuming that that is realistic I'm assuming because I don't know okay I've never been in an, in an auto twin otter uh, I have no idea how it works out and uh, the rules kind of with which you pack things but you can see sort of that the tail is rather um, yeah off this the, the center of gravity and by the way talking about center of gravity see this here there is your indication we have a center of gravity now 36 percent way towards the back and this indicator actually moves so <laughs> the aircraft comes up again if you basically take out it all in other words what you should definitely do is you should only fill this after you have either filled the front or you have some passengers sitting in the front in order to counteract the weight and you need to be sort of careful um, I have no idea if this is realistic if it is really like that if you have to be that careful what you put in the back but potentially what you would probably do is you would probably load the front part first okay you can actually see how the aircraft tilts down sort of the the gear and now comes the first little snag that I found uh, watch this so this compartment is theoretically full right I can load this up center of gravity is way forward okay and uh, and you can see really how we I mean that's okay it, it looks realistic so you overload it and the whole thing comes down it's just I'm a bit surprised about this here I mean if, if you do a menu like this I would think that it makes sense to stop when the compartment has reached its maximum weight but there you go now I don't know if this is a bug or if that's, that was intentional let's assume it was intentional uh, obviously one possibility is to counteract this by filling up your rear compartment and again here you have the same thing so you can really over overdo it on the weights until the moment that you reach above max takeoff weight okay um, 
TOW means maximum takeoff weight, so you are above the maximum maximum takeoff weight. Um, but yeah, and you can really see how the aircraft is on its knees here. It's really pressed down. <laughs> so, and look, look at this. So if you're not careful, it's back on the tail again. All right. Okay. So uh, let's let's go back to normal parameters again. Um, they haven't really done a repeat function, so it'll be a lot of clicking. At least I haven't found one. There's no scroll working here, so just just keep uh, pressing this until everything is back to normal. All right, and then we also reduce the luggage again and you can see how the aircraft is coming up and already we are already tilting back. Now I'm a little bit surprised that such a small weight like uh, what have we got here payload 380 kilograms 370 we're talking 10 kilograms um, and the aircraft already I think that the, the front wheel is lifted the way it looks is it no no that doesn't look no no no, no. it's okay so let's see 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, uh, 90, <laughs> yeah, you, you can load about 100 kilos, but you need to make sure that you have this filled, okay? So that's a bit of a puzzle there at the beginning, and you need to be careful that you don't break your plane. <laughs> the moment the passengers come in, um, you can guess what happens. <laughs> now again, I'm not sure that it is that easily <laughs> tilted in real life. Uh, so if you have to, your passengers come in and sit in the back. So you, this basically means that you have to continuously tell them where to sit. Maybe it is like that. Maybe it isn't. I have no idea. Um, so make sure that you kind of load your your passengers from beginning at the front and uh, just just make sure that you keep this center of gravity here in between these two lines I would think yeah interesting feature and you guessed it if you play around with the fuel you get the same thing so if but the fuel is uh, not as far out that means in theory, you shouldn't really be getting the tilt unless the rest of your weight is, at, let's say, in a critical... So if, if, if you're just about with your center of gravity, you might actually tilt the aircraft with the fuel. Yeah. Or if you're completely empty, this could actually make your, your airplane tilt again. Right. So just play around a bit and just make sure that this stays in in the sort of normal range ideally it is somewhere in the middle and around 20 something okay somewhere in this somewhere in this area okay so that's the loading um, interesting feature and I can see where this was uh, what this was trying to do here um, and it is probably realistic to the degree that that I would say it is realistic because if you if you put too much weight in the back of this airplane due to the the way that the uh, the gears are here and so on it is possible that you can actually tilt it backwards so you, you should be careful if it is that serious um, I don't know I, I can't really tell you um, Actually, I wonder if you can open the second door as well. I haven't actually tried that yet because in theory you could open... Ah, you can. You can, you can, you can. No problem. And there was another door. Where was that? I think it is... Uh, no. Uh, that was probably... This could be an emergency. I think this is the emergency exit thingy or so. But um, you can see it from outside. But there is no... There is no way to open that one. Okay, so that's that. Uh, you can get rid of it. Um, by the way, they have the toggle radios. So um, 
here you have all your radios in, in one pop-up view, which is nice. And they do have a checklist. And thank God you can actually make it a bit bigger because for someone like me with not the best eyes, um, small writing is difficult to read. Uh, and it's a long, long checklist. You can go through this. All right. Or uh, you do it like me. Um, I, I, don't get me wrong. I actually do like the checklist. You can get rid of it by pressing on X, but I actually prefer, someone has actually brought out a X checklist plugin. By the way, who doesn't know, the, the people that are new to Xplain, this is one of the must plugins. You get them on the forum Xplain org, X checklist. And you get clist.txt files. Okay, so if you don't know that yet, get yourself this plugin. Uh, it doesn't take performance uh, away from you. It can be loaded every time. I have it as one of my standard plugins. And every aircraft that, where I find a decent clist.txt file uh, by just searching, searching for, a C, um, I don't know, your airplane and uh, use Google for that. Um, airplane, clist and checklist and X checklist or something like that, you will probably find for many of the aircraft you will find this and for example here uh, someone has this uh, or maybe it even ca came with the aircraft I can't really say possibly it actually came with the aircraft if not then um, I probably found it on the forum explain org because that's usually where I find these things all right now this checklist has been done in a way uh, that you can um, first you have all the the speeds and uh, and the information um, takeoff and climb for example rotation with flaps 10 so that's the first position and with flaps I need to we need to talk about that in a moment um, you would um, depend also a little bit on the weight that means you should uh, check what your weight actually is uh, stupidly enough these are in pounds and these in kilos but what you can do is you can divide them by two roughly that'll do and kind of you know simming environment we don't want to take it too serious so for example um, we have a total weight of 5401 kilogram so I multiply this by two is about 8,000 pounds and then I add another thousand or so so we're talking about 9,000 pounds we're, we're not that heavy so we can probably take the below the here the lowest one from this table if this is accurate that means we have to uh, rotate around 64 knots and keep with about 70 knots on the initial climb out if we use flaps 20 it would be 58 we rotate and 63 we keep um, and uh, VMC minimum 66 knots, uh, best angle of climb 87, uh, best rate of climb is with 90 knots uh, indicated and climb profile 85 knots till 1000 feet, then 700 feet per minute till cruise altitude. So you would try and kind of um, achieve 700 feet per minute and then the VFE max flap extend speed so 0 to 10 degrees you, you shouldn't be faster than 105 that is roughly here um, so you should be slightly under 100 knots when you pull out the first stage of flaps and uh, you should be definitely in the white area when you pull out more than flaps 10 which is um, the initial flaps then the cruise speed of this bird is 150 roughly um, you should not exceed 170 you can see this here this is the red line you should not go over that uh, max maneuvering speed at 5000 feet this is actually our altitude is 166 so i wouldn't uh, we should really try and stick to that so again don't exceed the red line that's basically it um, at 20,000 feet, it looks like it's going slower, but don't forget the higher you climb, and obviously you can climb to 20,000 feet with this bird, interesting. Um, the indication uh, of the indicated A speed is lower, but your ground speed is actually uh, uh, the same or could be the same. So it's uh, that's why these values get less, but it's not that you're flying slower. It's just that the indication looks lower. 
Cruise altitude is between 5,000 and 15,000 feet. Uh -huh. I thought so because 20 doesn't doesn't sound kind of realistic. Um, so you would uh, be somewhere in that range. Obviously, we have uh, uh, oxygen and stuff on board. Um, and uh, yeah, I wonder where that actually is. I have never checked. But it must be somewhere because if you fly 15,000 uh, and you don't want your passengers to faint, then you need to have that. <laughs> <laughs> the max range is 775 nautical miles. That's not that much, uh, you might think, but uh, the aircraft is not d uh, made for extended uh, journeys. It's actually made for short hops uh, on small airports and stuff like that. That's where, where it actually is best used. Descent and landing uh, rate speed, um, till 10,000 feet AGL, 1,000 feet per minute, um, until 1,000 feet below 10,000, we should be about 800 feet per minute and about 130 knots. And below, we should not be faster than 86. 86 is around here. So that's where this uh, also blue marker seems to be um, somewhere here, slightly above 80. And that's how, what we should probably use for the approach. Um, and the approach speed is 86. Yep, crosswind component 17 knots maximum. So you need to be careful. Um, but that is actually not a bad value so that allows you to do quite a bit of uh, landing even with uh, gusty winds as long as it don't it doesn't exceed 17 knots the v refs for landing reference speed with flaps 20 um, or with full flaps is um, depending on the weight again so for example for us we would land in and around 64 um, 64 to 59 and you can also see this is this is roughly where the red line is so we would we would probably try and land with the needle here around the, the the red line okay so that's that now um let's let's give you some um information that uh, that i had been fighting with for quite for quite a bit now oh, let's pull all these levers back here joysticks Actually, they have uh, made this now uh, in version one. I didn't. It didn't always work. There's only one thing now with the uh, axis, and that's the prop. It doesn't go completely back, uh, no matter what I uh, calibrate here. So um, at the beginning, I pull them back manually, and this is the fuel. It is actually done with a normal mixture. This is done with a normal prop, and this is done with a normal um, throttle axis. And uh, you can toggle the reverse mode you should put this on a switch if you have a side tick or something and you can't see this now but um, when you do that switch the throttles will actually go into the reverse don't forget to uh, use that button again to get out of it <laughs> otherwise you might be nastily surprised um, so that's um, that's the axis works basically it, it does basically work all right now let's get to to the first um, kind of gotcha that, that you might experience. If you have x -Sci panels like me, um, x -Sci tech panels, the plug-in and the panels do not work overly well with this aircraft. And there are a couple of issues. We're going to address them one by one. Um, in my view, they, they are sort of they're not small issues in, in one of the, at least in one of these cases, it is not small. Uh, it can be avoided. Uh, actually, all of them can be sort of worked around, but um, yeah. Uh, one issue we have is with the Excitec panel and plugins in general, because um, when there is an issue with this aircraft, basically on the forum, um, no matter what I read, is uh, the, very often the, the question came up: What other plugins are you using? So um, it's it's always easily blamed then on other plugins. Now I don't mean this nastily. Uh, I'm just saying this is the impression that I got: is that uh, there seemed to be a certain um, yeah dependency on on not not that dependency, but other plugins might actually influence whatever programming has been done here in this in this airplane um, so I definitely have disabled all 
but the lights for the SciTech panel because the lights, the, the, it's practical to use the panel because the lights are not exactly easily uh, found and you know they're here and and up here and uh, over there um, like here so for me when I use my simulator I want to use my hardware as well and I don't want to hear that an, an, an add-on doesn't allow me to do that because it could cause um, side effects okay so basically I tried it without the Excitec panels plug-in and with the Excitec panel plug-in all the issues that I have they are independent actually of it so the Excitec panel plug-in is not to be blamed for anything that we might experience um, uh, but I have switched off basically all the switches apart from the light switches because they are handy they shouldn't really break anything all the rest is disabled so I'm not really using my SciTech panels. Uh, by the way, the radios, they don't seem to have any negative effect. So I'm not using the autopilot uh, stuff, um, but that's okay because here in this aircraft, the autopilot is very simple anyway. Uh, it makes sense not to use the SciTech panel switches because they don't seem to work 100% well with this implementation of an autopilot. Therefore, it's okay. But the good thing is they have placed the autopilot here now in the front cockpit instead of I think it used to be somewhere here uh, which was not as handy because you had to always kind of reach over so this way you not only can see it but you can easily use your mouse to uh, modify even the altitude thing I, th I think I remember that this was on this side as well um, I may be wrong but in the old version I kind of remember that it was awkward to reach to so everything is here that you need and uh, therefore you do not really need to uh, have the excitec uh, thing the only thing that might be a little bit handy is the heading but again i don't want to interfere because there are issues with the glide slope interception and we are going to test this during this flight uh, i haven't tried that yet um, but i have been reading a lot on the forum and it seems that some people have absolutely no problem with the aircraft and other people do and I haven't yet really been able to establish a pattern here like what does it have to do with is it the X-Plane version uh, and so on um, so we shall see I have X-Plane version 11.11 .11. I haven't updated to 20 yet and I'm not going to anytime soon because I don't need VR uh, they need to convince me that uh, it has a lot of other interesting features before I'm actually activating this and I'm not doing betas anyway okay Right, so let's continue. Um, that's why I have turned off everything. Now let's go back to the, to the nicer features again. Uh, let's not linger too much on problems. Um, first of all, if you're kind of tired of, your <laughs> of the color of your interior, um, you can actually go and change it here by pressing here. Okay, uh, you can even go for black. Why don't we do this? This looks nicer anyway. Um, there is a flashlight now as you might think um, we, we can turn off flashlights also with a key in, in explain I'm not quite sure why it is in here because this is something where I would wonder uh, is there a reason why this comes as in an in a extra menu and you need to find the menu in order to open it I, I, I guess you can program a key to, to open it but uh, if, if it would really be pitch dark then uh, you would have really difficulties finding your your handbook here anyway um, I haven't quite understood what this is for but it's okay it's, it's there so no problem uh, this is the doors we can we can close them again um, there is actually an external power and what happens if you turn this on then presto you have this box there it doesn't make any noise uh, you would normally think that it would make some kind of motor or something it's probably a generator possibly um, I don't know anyway there is external power and uh, that means you can already uh, turn on and let's do that here put this on extern that's by the way why I switched off all the excitec panels because these are areas where things do interfere okay and now I can turn on the DC master and we do have some electricity coming you can see for example that this thing has uh, come sprung to life here and uh, we could probably uh, activate some other things and while we're at it let's get rid of this steering lock 
Okay, we don't need it. <laughs> we don't really want it. By the way, this is the parking brake down here. Okay, so we pulled it in order to have the parking brake on. And now comes another nice feature that I was very happy to see. Here you have the standard GNS 530 of X-Plane. But if you do, like me, own the Reality XP GTN 750, I do, you need to buy this, you need to activate the plugin for this to work. If you do not have it bought by uh, going to RealityXP or, or I'm not sure where else you can get it um, and have it installed, uh, this I'm not sure if, if the option wouldn't be available then, but I think reading in the forum, people have seen it, turned it on and wondered why nothing happens. But if you do have it, you click it on, you see how the model changes here and we actually have the Garmin now, it's, it has already electricity, so it, it fires up. Not sure if this is overly realistic. I don't care um, because it works and it's there and uh, it, that's good. Uh, the only thing is you cannot pop out that thing. So what you should probably do is that you... Def Oops, no, nope, that wasn't it. Sorry. <laughs> what you should probably do is define yourself a key. I wonder which one it was. Oh yeah, F9. So I defined F9 to get the pop-up window for the GTN. And uh, there you go. So you can always uh, pop it out like this. It's, I haven't really found any kind of uh, click spot that would allow you to do this. Okay. Not sure what that knob does. Was that? Ah, yeah, that was the volume. I actually turned this volume down because I don't want all that clicking going on. But that's... I think that's the clicking. Oh no, hang on. This might actually be the radio volume. Oh yeah, and... Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's turn this on again. Right. So, very nice. Okay, but you need to have that plugin. Otherwise, you will not see anything. And that's about it, what you can do here. All right, so you can close this menu again. The X is a little bit small. It took me some time to find it as well. I was kind of expecting it outside, but it was a very little, very little white uh, X. I can try. The thing is, you can't zoom in, but if you look here, there it is. There it is. And if you have actually used the, the resize, uh, it doesn't get better. <laughs> you need to know that somewhere here is a small click spot, and uh, when you find it, uh, it's there. and the black spot here um, resizes the menus. So once you know that, it's 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 actually quite good. Right, unnecessary electrics. I, I, I'm not going to go slavely through the whole thing. Uh, flaps are selected up the fuel gauges. Um, so, and here comes now. Um, yeah, how should I put it? Um, Basically, what we had is uh, when we use this and we went to the weight and balance and we look here. So at the moment, our fuel is not quite balanced because I've been playing around, I suppose. So let's see. Um, so I'm going to try and bring up the fuel near. And now I show you an unfortunate other thing that at the moment is a problem. And uh, <sighs> yeah, if you use show map, let's start like this. The map is something where you can see where you are, you can zoom in, you can do it uh, VFR sectional, then you can even see the airport layout. Um, you can do some very basic. Um, no, that is actually, that's actually your cloud layers, I think. So, but anyway, there's a very basic uh, things that you can do. You can actually move the aircraft, okay? You can uh, find out about the airport, you can set frequencies. And yes, for normal operations, that is fine, okay? But I'm the kind of guy who actually calls up the IOS, which is the instructor station of X-Plane. And watch what happens. Or maybe not. Interesting. Why does it not happen now? 
because the thing is I actually like to change my weather okay I do this I go out Aha, and now it happened it didn't happen immediately it actually happens as soon as you make some kind of modification now someone on the forum wrote but why are using why are people using I uh, iOS station anyway the instructor station you should be using the map that's beside the point the point is that a normal system function of the simulator causes the right tank to go empty and if you can imagine what fun I had when that happened during my flights all right so at the moment I need to really desist from opening the <laughs> instructor station and it happens again and again because I'm so used to go into the instructor station and not the map okay um, because I want to have also the weather report and stuff like that um, the moment I go there and and switch something or open up something my right engine stops working and I start tilting over and then emergency emergency and I need to try and fill up the tank then I need to restart the engine and it's a major pain in the butt now according to the forum I've found two threads about this um, only about two or three people are supposed to have this uh, I'm not sure because I'm probably number four now but um, in one of the threads he says he's he's trying to fix it the developer and the other one we, we kind of got uh, <laughs> we got the basically don't use iOS at the moment now for me I hope that that means that they're trying to fix it question is will they be able to find the problem and that is something we we need to see we need to wait and hope because this is a major pain in the butt there's going to be another pain in the butt um, which I can't show you because I have done something about it but I'm going to tell you when we are uh, when we're at it okay so this is now a bit of a bummer and the thing is if you now go to the weight and balance eh, hang on if you know to the weight and balance see this okay um, you need to fill it up again and yesterday I had the issue that actually whatever I had in here and, and what showed up in the fuel quantity didn't match so basically it showed me a, f a full tank uh, but it actually showed zero here but that was only one or, I think it was only one time that I had this and I just wasn't able to fill up the tank from this menu so I I then went here into the weight and balance and I kind of uh, did it from here all right because that's always another option and as you can see we have a slight imbalance now it's it's equalized I'm going to do this and uh, let's have a quick check 442 884 442 so it has actually taken the weight and balance for some reason I had one occasion where this didn't work yesterday but this might have been caused by other things because as you can imagine I was trying things out and it was um, <sighs> switching and uh, probably not in the in the most systematic way so when I did the not so systematic uh, it didn't match but now that I do it kind of uh, I stay calm about it um, it actually does work okay so yeah there you go uh, actually something I haven't tried yet can you actually overfill the tank no you can't but you can actually be too heavy so you should really try and uh, and also make sure that you keep um, keep your tanks basically the same speaking of uh, problems with the tanks or not problems but uh, how was that oh yeah up here what you um, can do is that you oh no hang on. what was that I, I kind of try to remember because there is a setting because these two tanks I think they're down here okay so there is the wing left and wing right engine off 
and refuel. So I still try to figure out what these settings do. Uh, but if you mess around with these switches, it might actually happen that your engine turns off. So it's the fuel pumps here. You should not mess with them, the boost pumps. Don't turn them off during flight. Because if you do, your engine will stop. At least it did with mine. All right. So leave that on and whoops. And also uh, down here, um, just leave it like this for the moment. Um, since the manual is kind of basic, it does just give you an, an overview of, of what is there. Um, I haven't yet fully understood how this how this works, but um, again, here you can see actually how much fuel we have, but in a different in a different way. And I kind of remember that there is a way of switching um, what tank is um, is or. If you have one tank empty, you're actually able to switch over and I guess that's these emergency pumps. So it is in theory possible that both engines are fed either by the F tank or the forward tank. So in the case where my forward tank, which is by the way on the right side, so this is forward, this is aft, okay. If my forward tank is empty, I could have switched to the aft tank and uh, then it would have been possible to run both engines from the same tank. It's just that when that happens, it goes so quick. And I, at, 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 the, at the beginning, I didn't realize that it had to do with the iOS because I just made a little change in the weather, the wind. And, and next thing I see is pff, my engine is off. And <laughs> it took me quite some time to figure this out. Once you know it, um, you can watch out for the iOS and you can you actually know what to do in order to uh, get your fuel back. You probably pause the, the, the simulation, then you, you try and fill up that tank again or, or, or use that emergency kind of procedure. So be aware of this. Um, it might happen to you. It might not, because according to many, a lot of people don't have that problem. Maybe they're not using the iOS. That could be one reason why there aren't that many people with the problem, maybe. I can't tell you. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the checklist. So fuel gauges, cross feed, standby boost pumps tested. Uh, I mean, I'm not really going out to every single individual step, but just if, if you feel like it. Um, oh yeah, by the way, um, it is possible to get rid of the yoke, but not in the old fashioned way. So I've been clicking my my thumb off uh, trying to find where the um <laughs> where that is uh, because i do have a a non-standard um key assignment i use my own key assignments uh, i'm not standard but standard is yankee for yokes so basically what you can do is you go for yoke and you toggle the yoke visibility. So this is something new in Next Plane 11, I think. And um, since I reassign my keys from scratch, th things like that get lost in mine. You should have it. Um, I can reprogram it back. And now watch, you can get rid of your yoke. Because sometimes it's a little bit in the way. And this way you can actually uh, get rid of it. All right, and then call it back up with the Yankee key, the Y. So um, you can actually test the, the fuel pumps uh, because the test mode is, and here we come again with uh, the test mode is an implemented thing. Okay, and we have different ways that switches work. And as usual with these kind of um, designs you need to find out what way each switch works some of them go like you click okay it's easy like this one here others uh, you need to pull like this one here okay and you need to pull it quite quite long so they don't easily come others you need to go left and right um, no, for example Ah, uh, here it follows, yeah, but was it the heading? Oh yeah, heading, 
uh, is reverse. So instead of you pulling it in the sort of direction where you want the buck to go, kind of the intuitive one, it's the counterintuitive one, which is you basically, um, you see how the, the knob turns? It is actually reversed, okay? You get used to it, but um, yeah, it takes time, especially because here they have done it differently. <sighs> okay. <laughs> So don't ask me why, and here they have done it this way too, here. Uh, so how come they're, they're now going... <sighs> knobs in X-Plane. This is not so much a developer thing, okay, so don't get me wrong. This is, this is just the standard way explain works and if a developer uses the standard way of doing explain he's not doing anything wrong it's just sometimes it's so counterintuitive and I, I don't always understand like this thing now I don't understand because you've seen me using this knob and it didn't do it did it the other way around and for some reason now that I use some other knob it does it right again <laughs> just beyond me anyway <laughs> good to know um, so I just next time just pull some other knob and then hopefully I have it in the correct way. Oh, by the way, when you reach this border here, this is going to be a longer try and fly by the way, um, you see this STMA auto update and I've turned it off. Um, there was a reason why I turned it off, but what it does is basically if you enable it, every time you start this uh, the simulator and load this aircraft, it will look for updated files and it will replace them automatically. Now you may want to ha have that, you may not want to, because I had to actually modify the files in order to um, get rid of a problem that I have with the flaps. And obviously, every time, time I've done the change in one of the files, it would go, the next time I start the simulator, it would load the aircraft, and while loading it, it would override my files, and I'm back with the old settings and uh, with the old problem. <laughs> So you better um, leave this off if you are like me and have done some modifications. Otherwise, you can have this on and you can be sure that you always get the latest version of the aircraft, which is actually a nice thing. Fuel off switches, check normal. The fuel off switches. Um, yeah, and that's one of those things I'm not 100% sure. Is it these ones here? Okay. Probably, um, but why it's say normal, I don't know. Or maybe it's this one here. Oh yeah, this is the switch where you can, uh, oh yeah, no, no, hang on. This is the switch where you can switch between tanks. So, what's that called? Fuel off switches? Um, okay, the checklist isn't maybe very accurate here because I wouldn't have, consider this to be a fuel off switch. This is actually for me, this is a kind of a cross feed uh, here, but uh, according to the to the description, we're probably talking this here, um, the fuel off switch is actually down here. And if you turn the pump off, uh, you have basically the same problem. <laughs> Your fuel is off. At least it was to me. Fire warning. Um, yeah, it's probably somewhere here. So you can go here and do a test. Yep. And it's doing a lot of noise, that's good. Then the clock, uh, you can actually test the clock. Can you? Clock set, ah, so no, you can set the clock, uh, forget it. Generators are both off, uh, by the way, the generators are here. Okay, so they're in the off position. The bus tie uh, is supposed to be in the open, according to this checklist, so I do this, caution lights. Uh, yes, you can test the caution lights. Where can you test the caution lights? Apart. Um, uh, let's see, where was that indicator? Um, yeah, I think that was somewhere up here. I mean, you need to get used to this. This is a bit like the MD-80, okay? Uh, it's not the most intuitive way, but once you, you've been using this aircraft a couple of times, you actually start finding your way around. It just takes a little bit of time and uh, here you can also do the brightness. Circuit breakers are checked. Now, 
check circuit breakers are not coded anyway so um, they are always checked so you can take this off before start checklist parking brake is set now the parking brake is down here it's set weight and balance uh, yeah we've done our weight and balance and I hope we are balanced enough let's check if our messing around hasn't hasn't thrown us off no we are in sort of a good yeah no, no it's fine so I can use this carbon signs as required well basically you go up here and you turn on and yeah, here's another thing, um, Twatter. Usually up here, off is the up position and on is the down position. You just have to get used to this, um, that you need to bring the switches sort of down or uh, down from this view, like forward, and forward turns them on. There are some switches where it's the other way around, like here, but again, this is not the developer's problem. This is actually just the way um, this aircraft has been coded, okay, uh, done. So, um, yeah, in most cases, off is up or off or backward, and on is forward, apart from the exceptions. <laughs> Fuel levers in the off position, that's these two fellas here. Generator switch is off. Yeah, we've done that. Position lights, they want us now to have the position lights on. The position lights are here. There are basically enough lights. I use my switch here, one of the few that I've activated. The anti-collision light they also want on. That's this here. It's also the beacon switch, basically. Um, and now some blowers and some cockpit fans. Forget about those. Bleed air is off. Bleed air is here. Uh, here. Okay, they need to be off. Avionics off. Well, the thing is, I'm not even sure where you turn avionics on or off, but they basically mean that you should have all your avionics off, I think. I don't think there is a, 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 an avionics switch. At least I haven't found one. Um, then boost pumps on. Now, that, that's these two here. And you need to bring them up, which you can do by clicking on them. And the voltage minimum 24 checked, uh, that's here. So you check that it is 24 volts. Yep. Prop area clear. Yeah, there's nobody around. And the doors, well, let's let's actually get the doors closed. Now this you need to do really manual. There isn't any kind of menu that allows, uh, possibly you can program some keys, could be, I don't know. I haven't done it. Um, so, but I have placed my cabin view so that I can uh, get to these I can click here on the stairs and it kind of brings in so that should hopefully have all the doors closed we still have the external power unit attached don't forget and um, so both we are now for the engine start. Now, what I would do is I would actually um, switch now to battery and get rid of the external power. Let's get rid of the external power off. So, and now what we need to do is we need to turn on the igniter for the well, let's start with the right engine. Um, and now what you need to do is you need to kind of, first you, you start cranking it by moving this uh, switch into where the arrow shows, okay? In this case, right. Stay a little bit on it and then move the fuel lever to on. So as soon as this thing starts kind of turning, don't forget this because otherwise your engine will never start. So uh, they say if you if it reaches 15% here, let's show you this. So basically you could also go to the, um, hard to read, but uh, let me see, what was it? Uh, SNG, uh, NG, NG, what do they mean with NG? I don't know. 15% rich fuel lever. 
I'm not sure what NG exactly is. Probably this here. I don't know. But that's a checklist, okay? Um, monitor the engine goes stabilized, start switch release, and then uh, prop lever max RPM. So we're now pulling forward the prop lever for that engine into the max RPM, which is here. And you can hear how it kind of spins up because the RPM is now increased. For some reason, I can't uh, do anything here. Okay, power lever operating engine idle. So we have that back into the idle position. Generator operating engine reset on. So because we now have a running engine, I'm going to turn the generator for that on. Battery load, wait until 0 0.4 or less. The battery load um, is supposed, I, I guess, here. Mm, but it doesn't really do anything. I don't know. Then power lever idle, generator off. Power lever operating idle plus 15, that means... So we need to ah uh, hang on maybe we need to do this here okay whatever procedure that is it doesn't seem to work here but that's okay power lever idle generator we turn off again uh -huh. so this is the procedure now we go to start engine number two that means same spiel hold this um, and. If you're able to see it and do everything at the same time, you're lucky. I have joysticks assigned and we can see how this thing comes on. Same thing, fuel is on. And once it has kind of stabilized, I bring forward the prop levers to max RPM. So I'm doing a little bit of NG plus 15. Maybe that's the, the basic basic RPM or something. I don't know. And then we do sort of plus 15. If it's the CG RPM, then we're talking 55. So put it on 55. Then we do the generator switches reset and then on again, reset and <laughs> reset and on again. And the bleed air we turn on. This is here and here. The blower, forget about the blowers, temperature controls, trims set for takeoff. Trims are down here. If you have a trim wheel or something, or if you have your switches like I do, then just move it into this. Um, it's hard to see. Okay. I can also see that um, the rudder trim is a little bit off, and here comes now something that is really awkward. But there's the aileron trim. Okay. So, if you need it set for takeoff, um, you would, in order for the checklist to work out, I don't know what trims it's actually checking. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Radio enough. Um, we're now going to turn on all the avionics. Okay, including the, the GTN, which has come on again. All right. Then, transponder is in standby. Since we are in Germany, we could now put in the transponder code of 700. Alright. 
Volts and load checked. I don't know. This uh, this always looks almost the same, although it's a little bit down. Now that's the battery load. It it still seems to be drawing from the battery, but I don't see much much difference when I switch here, so I have no idea. Um, then we check the reverse. Now for that you need to have, as I say, you need to have a switch applied, and I'm switching now. Okay, and don't forget to switch back and check by... Uh -huh. ah. So you need to make sure that you're out of reverse. Sometimes with the switches that doesn't always work. And here comes now one of my big problems. The flaps in the original aircraft is set to what they call infinite in the aircraft definition file. The ACF file. The problem is at least on my simulator, for whatever reasons, when I apply flaps, normally uh, I have a key and uh, F6 and F5 I use, F5 for bringing up or down the flap or up the flaps and F6 to bring them down as to extend them. Um, normally you have detents like in 10 degrees or something. But in this case, uh, you, you need to kind of stay on the on the key. Now, when you do this, you press your key, um, then the the flap will kind of go down a little bit, and you need to kind of stay on the key and and keep pressing the key until the flaps has reached that position. Because um, I guess that the the twin otter doesn't have um, individual flap detents, so you can. Use your flaps as your heart's delight. Kind of do nine degree, uh, nine degrees, or five degrees, or whatever, fifteen, twenty-five. Um, so you're basically free, I suppose, in the in the real aircraft. But something is wrong in the way this is done in X Plane Eleven. I'm not sure if it's a simulator issue. I've never had this with another aircraft. I have to say though, um, or is it uh, maybe in combination with that add-on? The whole problem is gone. If you go into the ACF file and switch the infinite to zero, from one to zero, and which means that now I have individual steps, flaps. So as I say, um, I use these individual steps, and that will have everything okay then for me. The other way, what happened is the airplane will pull to the right, sometimes to the left, but mainly to the right, very strongly. And, uh, no, to the left actually, to the left. Mainly to the left. And I need to have my aileron basically full deflection. So I can show you, this is basically how I fly when that happens. As soon as I extend the flaps, um, and no matter what I use as aileron trim or rudder trim and doesn't matter it is not working at all I can trim my my my, my flaps off <laughs> it will not work so switching this to the um, not infinite ways of doing flaps actually solved my problem all right so 80s clearance received taxi lights Taxi lights are up here. Again, I have my switch, so I turn it on. Brakes checked, so why don't we release the brake, give a little bit of power, and then just use the brake pedals. I have brake pedals, otherwise you need to use your key. And you need to find a key for the brake action. Caution lights uh, are extinguished. Yes, that's these fellas here. Okay, and as we can see, there is no caution light on, which is a good sign, I suppose. Radio and navigation. Okay, so, since we have not programmed yet, because I'm a little bit um, ahead of myself here. So, basically, Echo Delta Lima Victor, let's very, very, very quickly, quickly go through here. So, it's the Sonia 3 Sierra. We're doing our usual thing. Okay, runway 27, load the departure. There you go. Okay, other waypoint, 
Echo Delta Lima Victor because this, this is where we want to go to, basically back. And then we load procedures, we use the arrival, sop to one whiskey, load the arrival, and load procedures, approach, and we're going to use the ILS 27, um, load the approach. Okay. So what we have now is our our course. You can do the same thing in the normal uh, GPS, okay? It just looks a bit different um, the way you do it, um, but that's my basic my basic flight plan. Now, obviously, uh, this is not quite the way I want it, so I remove LAA because I don't want that. And if we now go back to the map and have a quick look, zoomed out, we can see that um, that we have a little discontinuity, it seems, because SOP2 and then we have a problem. Houston, okay, so let's go into the flight plan and try and sort this one out. Approach, SOP2, rematch. Yeah. I don't want to activate vectors to final. Okay, did that do the trick? No, that didn't do the trick. Actually, that made it worse. Because we're now... Uh, yeah. Uh, we need to activate our first leg. Insert, activate the leg, because um, we want to take off and can go here. And we're going to sort this out when we are closer. This is not to test the... the um, yeah, that's okay. We're, we're, go we're going to be okay. Uh, this is not to test the, the GTN. Uh, basically, it's just so that we have our route in there. That's all I really want to use it for. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't, I don't need more of that. Uh, with the GNS 530, you do the same thing. You can uh, just select your approach or you load a flight plan that you already have. Um, it, should, it hopefully should work the same way. Flight instrument set, engine gauge is normal, fuel system is normal, pumps on. That's uh, these pumps here and um, normal is set, okay. And hydraulic pressure, so the hydraulic pressure, <laughs> yeah, um, let's see. Where is it? Oil pressure, fuel flow. That's actually, ugh, that's actually one of the things have been looking for the last time. I think that these are the hydraulic gauges. So it looks like we have something like hydraulic pressure, but I can't really tell you if that's okay or not. Let's assume it is. Flight controls, free and full travel. And you can see the jitter, because more and more my axes are getting worse with every month they live. So Cabin signs are on. Peto heat, um, the pito heat is somewhere up here. Um, the pito heat, ah, there it is, there it is, that's the switch. I actually got that one coded as well. So, takeoff briefing is complete. 